we'll move away from the technical side towards mm-hmm. the, the people that populate the film in terms of your voice talent. Sure. Right. Um, so how was that to, to assemble a team like that? Because I guess you never really know who's going to say yes, who you're going to get, and then you get that magnificent list at the end. So that must be pleasing. It was. You know, I think obviously Clay as the director came in with an idea of the characters he had and the voices that he'd like to hear for them. But we go through a series of tests to get the, to the final result. It wasn't like, you know, I mean, it's a wishful list, but like we're going to start with John Cleese. We were lucky to get John Cleese. But, yeah. you know, you have to go through the whole uh, the phases of, OK, this is what the character looks like. These are the voices I think I like matching the voices to the picture, even though the voices are from something completely different. So we go through and see, does it feel like it's fitting? How does it work? And then we actually will take and animate the character to that voice to give it the final like thumbs up. Yes, we're heading in the right direction. And then we hope they sign on. Yeah, it's, it's uh, we call it a non sequitur casting call. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll pull a clip from some movie and then we'll have a drawing or two and we'll just take that clip and connect it to the drawing and then you just watch and listen. And it's, it's an interesting process mm-hmm. to help sort of narrow down your focus on who you might is it, choose. Is it tricky with a Python to tell him what to do with the character? <laughs> well, yeah, first of all, as a director, you never tell an actor what to do with a character. You know, the, the, what's fun about the process is you actually sit there and you discuss it back and forth. And, you know, bringing in a legend such as John Cleese, first of all, I'm, I'm in awe right away that I'm able to even be in the same room with the guy. And then to be able to share, you know, this project and, and to, get, to have him be part of it. Um, I looked to him. We went back and forth on, like, who this character is. And he came up with several different ideas for Bulldog old school RAF or a crotchety something or another and you know another thing and and I'm like well it's a little bit old school RAF and I kind of like the crotchety and so he combined those two and he goes oh well then maybe it would sound something like this and he did it and I'm like man that's it so then we had a rough idea and then we went we went in and as we as we recorded um, you know we have it one way on the script so we'll get one or two just for safety but that's really for warm-up and then it's all about kind of letting John go and myself going back and forth and riffing. And then what you see, that that's when the magic really happens, when all of a sudden that character gets elevated and it's really funny. And that's that's all John. There's some great clips on the cutting room floor. There really is. Whole DVD extras. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a sequel. That's right. <laughs> awesome. My time is up.